Welcome to the class on anomalies of development of face. I'm Dr. Gaurav Agnihotri. And among the various anomalies of development of face which we will do, the most important I feel is cleft lip. So this, uh, the upper lip of hare or rabbit normally has a cleft and therefore this anomaly where the lip is split in humans is called cleft lip or hare lip. So what happens in this anomaly is, we can see it in the figure, that the maxillary process does not fuse with the medial nasal process. So this gap or sp split portion in the upper lip, which may be unilateral or bilateral, is called cleft lip. And the reason for this cleft lip is that the maxillary process has not fused properly with the median nasal process. So when the maxillary process does not fuse with the median nasal process, this leads to formation of a split upper lip which may be unilateral or bilateral. And normally the maxillary process fuses with the median nasal process by the sixth week of intrauterine life. So this cleft in the upper lip due to failure of fusion of maxillary process with the medial nasal process may be unilateral or bilateral and it may also be midline as we can see it in, the, in this figure. So midline cleft of upper lip is due to a defective development in the lowermost part of frontonasal process. So frontonasal process is going to form the philtrum of the upper lip and the median portion. So a defective development of the lowermost part of frontonasal process may give rise to a midline defect of the upper lip. So these babies who have got a cleft lip, they have they experienced feeding difficulties. The milk may come out of the baby's nose and their teeth may also be missing. So it's an important congenital abnormality. The cleft lip, you must be aware that it may be unilateral, bilateral or there may be a midline cleft in the upper lip or gap in the upper lip and that leads to feeding difficulties and the teeth may be missing in the baby and often it requires surgical correction. So the cleft may also take place in the lower lip. So there may be a cleft in the lower lip also and the reason for that is that the two mandibular processes do not fuse with each other properly. So that leads to the formation of cleft in the lower lip as we can appreciate in the figure. So the defect usually extends into the jaw. So we can see here that the cleft in the lower lip is extending into the jaw here. Next we come to the oblique facial cleft. So here what happens is that there is non-fusion of maxillary process with the lateral nasal process. So that leads to formation of the cleft and the cleft in case of oblique facial cleft extends from the mouth to the medial angle of the eye. So it extends from the mouth to the medial angle of the eye and this is due to defect in development of the nasolacrimal duct. So here we need to understand the development of the nasolacrimal duct. Normally there is a line of fusion and this line of fusion extends from the stomatodium or the mouth to the medial angle of the eye. This line of fusion is marked by a groove called the nasolacrimal sulcus. A strip of ectoderm gets buried along this groove and gives rise to the nasolacrimal duct. Due to defective development of nasolacrimal duct and non-fusion of maxillary process with lateral nasal process, we have this cleft which extends from the mouth and goes right up to the medial angle of the eye and that is referred to as oblique facial cleft. So I repeat, normally there is a line of fusion which extends from the stomatodium to the medial angle of this eye. So this line of fusion is marked by a groove called the nasolacrimal sulcus. A strip of ectoderm gets buried along this groove and gives rise to nasolacrimal duct and it is due to a defective development of nasolacrimal duct along with non-fusion of maxillary process with lateral nasal process that gives rise to the oblique facial cleft. Next we come to macrostomia and microstomia. So this green portion here, it represents the area which is formed by the maxillary process while this blue portion is representing the area which is formed by the mandibular process in the face. So inadequate fusion of maxillary and mandibular processes may lead to an abnormally wide mouth which is referred to as macrostomia or a small mouth which is referred to as microstomia. So this macrostomia or wide mouth or narrow mouth or microstomia is due to abnormal fusion of maxillary process shown in green here in the figure with the mandibular process. 
Next, we come to the case of proboscis and cyclops. So, in this uh, anomaly, uh, in this figure, we see uh, the condition of proboscis where we find a cylindrical projection of nose just below the forehead. So, the nose is located just below the forehead. The cylindrical projection of nose is located just below the forehead in the case of this anomaly, which is referred to as proboscis. This is usually associated with cyclops. Now, what happens in the case of cyclops is that there is a single median eye. So, proboscis, cyclops, that is single median eye and missing nose are features of this congenital anomaly and proboscis and cyclops are seen often together. So, this congenital anomaly we need to be aware of. Next, we come to the mandibulofacial disostosis or the first arch syndrome. So, we can see here the different pharyngeal arches, first, second, third, fourth and sixth on either side. So, the structures derived from the first arch we need to be aware of. So, the entire first arch may remain undeveloped on one or both the sides. So, in this condition, there is defective development of mandible, maxilla and external ear. The prominence of cheek is absent and the ear is displaced in this condition. So, development of maxilla, mandible and external ear is hampered due to the non-development of the first arch on one or both the sides. Next, we come to hypertelorism. So, when we did the development of the eyes, we did that the eyes first formed are directed laterally and it is due to narrowing of the um, frontonasal process that the eyes they face forwards. So, when the, there is failure of narrowing of frontonasal process, so when this part does not become narrow, this part of the frontonasal process shown in orange, when there is failure of narrowing of this part of the frontonasal process, then the eyes they are directed laterally only and do not face forwards due to failure of narrowing of frontonasal process and this condition is referred to as hypertelorism. So, here the eyes are widely separated due to failure of narrowing of frontonasal process. With this, I complete the class on the anomalies of development of face. So, I thank you for watching.